Hi everyone, um, in this video I'm just going to quickly walk you through how to use MoleView. Um, MoleView.org, so the website that we're going to use for this activity. Okay, so that's what you would type in in your address bar and then this is what's going to come up to start with. <clears throat> okay, so you're just going to click on start to begin. Alright, so this is what MoleView looks like, the interface. So this is, it's a browser based thing, so it's independent of whichever device you're watching this on at the moment. But so what we're interested in um, the, now, from a chemistry point of view, this is a really um, useful tool that we can use to draw structures of molecules and things when we get to, to that point, just for um, curiosity. This one is caffeine. Um, but the, at this stage, all we want to be using MoleView for is a um, looking at 3D models. So the way that you get to just, which is this stuff over here. So in order to get rid of this stuff over here, what we do, we go up to the MoleView uh, menu bar up the top here, and you click on 3D and this is what comes up, okay? So we have um, a range of kind of toolbars and then we have the search bar up the top here. So you're gonna have a look at the sheet and look at the different um, options that are there and then you're going to type them into our search bar up here. So we're gonna start with ICE1H. So as we start to kind of type it in, that you get some various different options that appear down here. Okay, and so then what it does is it comes up in this space here. Now what we're interested in doing is that we want to see, rather than just kind of like one little subsection of the structures we're looking at today, we want to look at them a bit bigger, a bit broader. So the way that we do that is that we use this model kind of toolbar up here. So we go up to model, and as we scroll down, down at the bottom here we've got the crystallography kind of section, which is um, where we, we're going to use either one of these two options, particularly this 2x2x2 two by two by two supercell. What that's going to do is that it, we're looking at the, how a crystal would form, how a solid would form from the, each of these substances. And so we want to see it in, like with multiple kind of um, molecules or particles in, in all dimensions. So we're going to choose one of these options. And then what you can do, so isn't, isn't it pretty? Look at that wonderful hexagonal kind of structure. Interestingly, hexagons are a really common shape in nature. Um, you know, that's from you know the honeycomb that, that bees make and, and all that sort of thing. But chemically it's also very stable. So what you can do is that in within this this part of the window that you can actually click and drag and rotate your model around. Okay, so you can see it from all sorts of angles and you can see um, other areas or ways in which it might line up. Okay, and also you can zoom in and out. So you can see things up close, you can identify particular molecules, you can um, go more broad than that, and so on. Okay, and so the, the idea of, of this tool is that we're going to be doing this and then we're going to be making note of the structure of that substance. Okay, so actually then seeing, all right, well, um, when, I, when I'm looking at, so what types of particle do I have first? Um, and then how are they kind of connected together? So the thing is, if I zoom in a little bit further, that each of the colours represents a particular element. Okay, now because we're talking about ice, okay, so hopefully you could recognise that we would be talking about water in solid form. And so each of these little particles um, is a water molecule. Okay, so the red being oxygen and the white being hydrogen. And you can see that for if you pick any particular molecule to look at, um, that then we have some connections within that molecule. Okay, so connecting the, the whites and reds together, um, the, the, the whites to the reds. Okay, but that each of these water molecules is not directly connected to the ones beside it. They're, it's arranged, they're arranged in particular ways, but they're not actually um, connected. So we've got a three letter code of T for connections throughout, S for some connections, and N for no connections at all. Okay, so in this situation, you know, we'll, we'll be filling the table out according to that idea, but you can identify that there are connections within molecules, but within the water molecule, there's a nice, um, that, that nice kind of um, even sort of arrangement, um, but there's no actual direct connections between molecules. Okay, and so now we're going to go up to the top um, panel and we're going to start to look at some of the ex other examples here. Now, I, here, I just want to illustrate this, this first kind of wrinkle. So I go up and I type in argon, and look, I come up with a beautiful, pretty sphere. Isn't it wonderful? I go to my model, I go to my 2x2x2 two by two by two supercell, which is what I want, nothing happens. Okay, whoop de doo Mr. Carpet. Isn't that amazing? Okay, no, this is showing you what we need to do from here. 
okay? Because some of the, the stored kind of files on, the, on this database, all the stored kind of records, don't have this crystal kind of structure to them. What we have to do, we in our search bar, we go to this little drop down arrow over here, click on that, and we go crystallography open database. So we're looking through a different kind of data set um, to find information on argon. And so we come on up and then you click on the name. Okay, and now we see we've still got the same coloured spheres, but now you can see we've already started. We've got four of them, and that when you go to do the same thing, that you get information. Okay, so you can see with this one that we only have one type of sphere, so it's an atomic substance. Okay, so only one element being involved here. Um, but there are no connections between these particles, even though we can make them line up in all sorts of lovely ways, um, that there's no connection, so we give it an N. So we'd say it's atomic, but there's N for no connections, okay? But so just remember that for many of these records, you'll need to do that process. Typically, you'll be, you'll be picking the first one, but that it's just, it's got to search through a different record, that's all. Okay, so now, but I'll, I'll just, um, for interest, show you sodium chloride. Okay, now I'm probably going to have the same sort of situation here, but I'll just double check. Okay. That if I go to do that, yep, no joy. No joy. Okay, so I go to my crystallography open database. I'm going to go to this, the first record here, and voila, you can see that I've got much more interesting model to work with. I do my supercell, and now I can have a look. Okay, so I can identify, I mean, I mean you can see that nice kind of cubic sort of structure. You know, we've got this, this kind of this lattice, we've talked about that term and they're connected in all these sorts of ways. So what we have, we can identify that because it's a, it's not atomic because we've got more than one colored sphere. Um, and it's also not molecular because we, um, for, to be molecular, we have separate discrete little chunks like our water molecules in the ice when we looked at, at the start. Um, and so also, so we can recognize this is ionic. Also because we've got a metal and a non-metal connected together, so that makes sense. Okay, so in that column you'd put ionic. But then what we do is then we can say, all right, well looking at this model, you can see these connections being illustrated between every purple to every green. So this purple is connected to these greens in, in those dimensions and then the one below it. If you try to, to focus in on one that's in the middle, it's connected in all dimensions, up, down, and then four kind of around it. Okay, so it's connected to six other particles. All right, so we would say it's T connected throughout. Okay, so what you need to do is using these same tools, work through each of the examples, and then what you need to do is come up with some more general principles and saying, all right, well, for each kind of set, um, what is the general rule? Okay, um, if you're not quite sure how that comes together, um, then, you know, work with, the, work with the people around you to try and see, see what you can come up with. And then at the end of the activity, the idea is that you can um, come up with some kind of classification rules, like a dichotomous key, you, know, you would in biology, you know, so you're saying, right, well, does it have one type of particle or more than one, you know, one, one element only or more than one. You know, so, so these sorts of things, so that you can take any new substance that you'd come across, you know, lots of things you could search for here, and identify which substance it should be, should belong to, okay? Whether it's atomic, ionic, and molecular, and what type of connections it should have. Okay, good luck. Thanks very much for watching, and bye for now.